Good day. Welcome to News Now on TV 360. I am Thelma Okuru. Nigerian President Muhammad Buhar has met with Amina Ali Inkek, the first Chibok girl rescued by security operatives in Sambisa Forest. The meeting was held on Thursday at the presidential villa in Abuja, the nation's capital. Amina arrived at the president's office after being flown in from the northeastern city of Maiduguri on a presidential jet. She was accompanied by her mother, security chiefs, and the governor of Bornu State, Kashim Shetima. On Wednesday, the army confirmed her rescue, saying she was with a baby. They also detained a suspected Boko Haram terrorist called Mohamed Hayatu, who claimed to be the girl's husband. Amina, who is from the town of Umbalala, south of Chibok, said all the Chibok girls are still in Sambisa Forest, except for six of them who have already died. Over 276 schoolgirls were taken from their school in northeast Nigeria by Boko Haram militants in April 2014. Her rescue may give a boost to President Muhammad Buhari, who vowed to crush the Boko Haram group when he was sworn in as president in 2015. A federal high court in Abuja has reinstated the impeached speaker of the Kogi State House of Assembly, Honorable Momo Jimo Lawal. The speaker was accused of financial recklessness and misconduct. He was impeached after he was endorsed by 17 out of the 25-member House. However, Justice Namdi Dingba on Thursday ruled that the process for the removal of the principal officers failed to conform with the 1999 Constitution. The Kogi State House of Assembly speaker was impeached last year, December 10th, along alongside his deputy, Aliyu Aku, and minority leader, Hassan Bellu. The indefinite strike embarked upon by the Nigerian Labour Congress entered a second day on Thursday. The Labour Union has urged workers in Nigeria to down tools after a last-minute meeting with the Nigerian government collapsed midway. The union called the strike action to protest the federal government's decision to hike the price of fuel despite an order by the industrial court against it. Fuel, which used to sell for 86 naira per litre, now sells for 145 naira per litre. The strike was, however, not as effective as most businesses across the country opened and workers in most states went to work in defiance of the call by the NLC. The federal government has said it's prepared to reopen negotiation with the Nigerian Labour Congress over the fuel price hike. Minister of Labour and Employment Senator Chris Ngige in a statement said the strike action called by the NLC to press for the reversal of fuel price will neither earn more money for the Nigerian government or repair the, the refineries. He, however, defunct claims by the leadership of the NLC that government did not consult the union before announcing the new pump price, adding that the government and labor met twice on the issue, with organized labor offering its own suggestions on the template presented by the Minister of Petroleum. Meanwhile, Edo State Governor Adams Oshomale says any worker who fails to work under the guise of participating in the strike will forfeit his or her pay. Nigerian Senate President Bukola Saraki was on Thursday seen at the Code of Conduct Tribunal for his corruption trial. Cross-examination of the prosecution witness Michael Wetkes continued with the investigator insisting that the Senate President did not declare some of his properties while he was governor of Kwara State. He was, however, mm -hmm. not able to provide evidence showing the properties purchased by the defendant. Saraki is facing a 16-count charge of false declaration of assets. The trial of spokesperson for the People's Democratic Party, PDP Olesa Meto, took a new twist on Thursday after he was reportedly hospitalized on his way to the Federal High Court in Abuja. Meto had been scheduled to appear before Justice Okona Bank but could not make it. His counsel, Emeka Itiaba, told the court the PDP spokesperson was ill and sought adjournment of the trial. Consequently, the judge adjourned the case to May 23, 2016. On Wednesday, a former aide to former President Goodluck Jonathan Dunyu Kukwe told a court how the ex nigerian leader paid Olisa Meto 400 million naira for the party's publicity efforts in the 2015 elections. Meto is standing trial for allegedly receiving 400 million naira from the office of the National Security Advisor, headed by retired Colonel Sambo Dasuki. 
Former National Security Advisor and retired Colonel Sambo Dasuki says weapons found in his house last year belonged to the NSA office. This was contained in Dasuki's statement made to the operatives of the State Security Services, SSS tendered and admitted as exhibit by Justice Adini Adimola. Dasuki is facing trial for unlawful possession of firearms. Dasuki claimed in his written statement that the weapons were to be returned to the office of the National Security Advisor by the security details at the end of the day. The National Youth Service Corps has announced that the 2016 Batch A Stream 2 orientation course has been postponed. The orientation exercise was initially scheduled to commence on Saturday. However, in a statement released by NYSC on Thursday, it said the new date would be announced in due time as soon as the NYSC sorts out necessary logistics. Earlier this week, the head of the NYSC service, Sule Kazuri, told the Senate Committee on Youth and Sports that the orientation program might be postponed due to lack of funds. France has officially presented to Niger the Noctar quota that was repatriated after it was intercepted in France while in transit from Togo to the United States in 2008. French ambassador to Niger, Denis Gawa, officially presented this piece of art to the Minister of Information and Culture at a ceremony to mark the 2016 International Museum Day in Abuja. The artifact is a terracotta figurative sculpture. The French ambassador said the return of the artifact was in line with the international law and within the framework of the 1970 UNESCO Convention. The convention is aimed at preventing the illicit import and export of ownership of cultural properties. Time for a short break. When we come back, we'll look at business and sport. Stay tuned. It's comedy time once again. Chapel of Comedy with Nehi. Featuring Igor, Elenu, MC Abbey, MC Shakara, Emeka Smith. Bash and many more. Music by Tim Goffrey. Special guest appearance from Motolai Kende, Charles Inoje. Venue, Golden Tulip, a mode of film, Festive Town, Lagos. Date 22nd May 2016, time 5 pm. Blue carpet 4 pm. Ticket regular 2000 naira, VIP 5000 naira, table for 5, 50,000 naira. For ticket bookings and inquiries, please call 806 237 2051. Or to 9187 Powered by Gospel Life Entertainment. 100% clean joke. Hello, you welcome. You watching the funny white man show, which is the biggest, the brightest, and the most entertaining show. In Africa. Funny you white man. Funny, funny white man. man. Yeah. Funny white man, but this way you talk, yeah. too much. Yeah. Give me five thousand man that you <laughs> too much. So you get it like maybe you move along the street. Ah yeah, me should like I'm going girl. You know, my own people nah, yeah. actually. Yeah. yeah, fine, it's fun. I enjoy it. And I want all those very few I'm forever you. sticking it personal. I will you listen one hundred sixty million Nigerians are corrupt. How? I brother, I'm looking for you. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's a growth and this is the time to build business and know the pitfalls and know what to do and what not to do. But there are months where you get business and months... You know how we do, how we do know. <laughs> we do the way you did it. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, you welcome. you watching Trending Matters on the Funny White Man Show. Of course, we will bring you trending issues just to entertain and tickle your fancy. Welcome back. Nigeria's NARA is expected to take a cue from the outcome of a rate-setting meeting by the Monetary Policy Committee held on Tuesday. The NARA was quoted at 3.40 to the dollar on Thursday at the parallel markets. The currency was weaker than 3.24 to the dollar last Thursday. However, at the official interbank, the NARA was trading around the peg rate of 197. The Central Bank of Nigeria has denied reports stating that Nigeria plans to devalue the NARA currency yet again. 
oil fell below $48 per barrel on Thursday. The price was pressured by a stronger dollar and a surprise increase in U.S. inventory served as a reminder that supply remains ample despite unplanned outages. Brent crude was down 1.0 cent at $47.93 per barrel, while U.S. crude was trading at 92 cents at $47.27 per barrel. Oil and other commodities came under pressure from the U.S. dollar, which firmed as the minutes of the Federal Reserve's latest policy meeting rekindled expectations for an interest increase rate. Greece Defense Minister says an Egypt air flight from Paris to Cairo made two sharp turns before plunging into the Mediterranean Sea. Panos Kamenos said the Airbus A320 had turned 90 degrees left and then a 360 degree turn to the right. He added that it then dropped more than 25,000 feet before disappearing from radar. Egypt Civil Aviation Minister said the possibility of a terror attack is stronger than technical failure. 66 people were on board flight MS804. Most of them were from Egypt or France. Five United Nations peacekeepers from Chad were killed and three wounded in northern Mali when their vehicle was hit by an explosive device and unknown gunmen opened fire on them. In a statement by the United Nations, 12 peacekeepers had been killed since the start of the year in dozens of attacks against the force in the Kido region where Wednesday's assault took place. Northern Mali is home to rebel movement and Islamist militants who have staged a series of high-profile attacks in the past year. Attacks have been recorded in in both Mali, Burkina Faso and in other neighboring countries. Moving on to sports, Nigerian football club Giwa FC has urged the league management company to schedule its game with Ayimba FC. The game, the club in a press statement signed by Secretary Samson Adam on Wednesday in Jaw said it regretted all inconveniences it had caused the league management company. This comes as the team faces dismissal from the top flight after missing three consecutive matches. Giwa mm -hmm. FC was banished to Ilori after Brawl stopped midway their game against Enugu Rangers in Jaws on March day 12. Sevilla clinched their Europa League trophy after beating Liverpool 3-1 in the final on Wednesday. The team survived a first half battering after hitting back with three second half goals, two from Coke to win for the third season in a row. Their victory makes them the first team to achieve such a feat. Liverpool's manager Jurgen Klopp was left baffled and devastated while admitting that Sevilla's performance ripped his game plan to shreds. The defending champions have enjoyed a disappointing domestic campaign, finishing seventh in La Liga and failing to win a single away game, the only team in Europe's top five leagues to do so. Aston Villa has been sold to the record club owned by a Chinese businessman, Tony Jiang Tongxia. The club was purchased for 60 million euros. The deal is the latest in a series of investments from China into football worldwide as the President Xi Jinping looks to make the country a global powerhouse in the sport. The purchase will see the chairman of the little known Recon group become the first mainland Chinese to fully own an English team. Aston Villa were relegated last season after they finished bottom of the table with 17 points, which led to the fans protesting against their owner Randy Lerner. Well, that's all we have on news now. Thank you very much for watching. I am Thelma Okoro.